whenever I'm editing my own photography, I'm usually trying to draw attention to something. And I'm usually trying to take away or sometimes try to take away attention, maybe even from something else. Uh, when I took that photo, something captured my attention. And, and my job, I always feel in editing is to help get you to see that because I know that you'll never see it on the screen. Um, and you'll also, the camera doesn't see things the way that we see things. It doesn't see tones and colors the same um, or as, as robust as the way we see it with our own eyes. So I always feel like my job is just to help draw attention to things. And in this tutorial, I got a really quick, a uh, simple and easy way that I often use to do that. Now I'm gonna do this demo inside of Lightroom Classic because that's what most people are using. Just so you know, all Adobe Raw editors with regards to what I'm about to show you work the same. So the biggest one would be Camera Raw. Uh, you would go to your masking tool over on the right hand side and all of the tools for masking that I'm using are gonna be seen inside of there. So they're exactly the same as what I'm about to do here. Quick review of the photo. I uh, just made a couple of, it just opened up the shadows a little bit, but when I'm gonna do a technique like this, I typically don't do a lot of basic panel changes. I, I mostly go straight into uh, the masking tools because that's what I'm gonna use to, to draw the majority of attention. If the photo's overly bright, overly dark, I might do a quick adjustment here, but then head over to the masking tool. So what we're first gonna do is try to get a mask of the area that you're working on, the, the area that's got the pretty light. So for me, that's that's gonna be right back here. This is, if, if I recall when I was here, this is what drew me into this, okay? I just saw some really nice light coming around this corner and I liked it the way it was kind of spreading out and I'm not getting that feeling from looking at it. So I'm gonna go to the landscape masking section here. If it's a landscape, this is usually a good place to go. And you can hover over the different masks that it gives you, okay? now. I'm gonna choose, the, the mountains is exactly what I want. So I could choose that. I just wanna show you, I'm gonna choose the one that says natural ground because I think a lot of times what's gonna happen is you're gonna find a mask that's close to what you want, but not exactly what you want here. So I'm gonna choose the one that says natural ground, even though I know mountains is actually perfect for this, but let's choose natural ground. The problem is that it's giving me all of these rocks up here. So the very easy way around that is I just go to subtract. I'll just take the brush, make it nice and easy, and uh, just go over here and just brush over the stuff that you don't want. So whatever tool is easiest for you, the, the brush, you make a big brush, it gets really simple to uh, subtract areas. But you know, it could change for your photo. You might need to use something a little bit more in depth for it. Let's go subtract all that area. So now I've got a mask of the background area primarily that I want. And rather than me try to use a tool to brush and kind of feather this off, what I do is I go into intersect. And okay? this isn't a feature I use a lot, but when I'm doing this technique, intersect works great. So you can get there a couple of different ways. You can hold down the option key on Mac, the alt key on PC, opens up the intersect button down there. Or you can just click on the main mask area. You can just click the pop out menu and you can choose intersect with. And what I use for most of the time is intersect with a radial gradient because the radial gradient, it maps to me, it maps light probably the closest to anything that we're trying to do. Okay, so what it's gonna do is it's, it's simply gonna feather out. So I'll choose radial gradient, and I'm just gonna click in the center here and feather that out. And you can see what I mean, especially if you go up to the top where you get to choose a feather setting, you wouldn't want the low setting, you'd want a high setting. So somewhere, usually 100% is a good setting that I'll leave it on. And then you can move it around, and because it was intersect, what it did is it intersected between the mask that I fed into it and the mask that I just created with the radial gradient. So if you look at the masking panel here, you can see there's the natural ground mask, there's what we brushed out of it, and then there's what I'm left with once you intersect the two, and that's exactly what intersect is. It's where do the two intersect with each other? Could you get this mask in a different way, possibly? It just be harder, you know? I don't want the water as part of this. I only want the rocks and that's why this was a good one. So now from here, all I do is go in there and I can make that area a little bit brighter. I can go down to color. I can make that area a little bit warmer with a little bit of color temperature. I can go down to effects and even add some texture to it. Maybe even some clarity. It's not, add some contrast to it, which is gonna draw your eye. You know, the contrastier things draw your eye, the softer things don't. So I'll go in there and add that. So now we've gone in and we've made that area brighter, okay? 
And then the simple thing to do would just be go back to that main mask, click on the pop out menu, and then just choose duplicate and invert mask. So now it flips it to the other, everything but that. And then I can go in here and bring down that exposure a little bit. Maybe bring down the blacks a little bit, whatever it happens to be. Um, now I can bring that down a little bit. And if you click on the before and after, there's a little eyeball in the top left corner of the mask panel. If you click on that, that's before, that's after. Again, before and after. So in a way, it was like adding a vignette, but I didn't use the vignette tool to do it. I went a little bit different about it so I can control it a little bit more, okay? We'll do, uh, we'll jump in here to another example. It's just a little bit different, uh, but really quick. I uh, just want to give you a very quick word from our sponsor. I promise I'll keep it fast. And I think it's very interesting because if you saw some of the masking tools that I was using before, they're part of the landscape masking uh, feature that has been recently announced by Adobe and all of its raw editors. To me, it, it's one of the biggest changes that, that has really ever come to Lightroom because it segments out all of these different areas of masks for us, uh, which you know, when you're trying to make things and draw attention to things in your photos and also at the same time, maybe trying to take away attention from certain things in your photos, we're often left masking and creating these selections. So this really takes care of doing that work for you. Uh, there's two parts to what I have here. I've got this scene split mini course. It's essentially a mini course on how to use all those tools. So just get through that learning curve a whole lot faster. And then there's a whole presets part of it. Presets to help give you a starting place, presets to help give uh, your creativity a little bit of a boost or just to speed things up. So you get both with the purchase of the course, very affordable on sale now. So I hope you'll swing by and check it out. Okay, back to the tutorial. So I just wanted to do one more example for you just to kind of hit it home and just give you a couple of little tips along the way. So we'll do the same thing. I'll go to my landscape masking option and we'll go see what masks it gives us. So it gave us sky and it gave us mountains. So good enough, we'll go to the mountain one here. I'll hit create. On this particular example, I don't really have to subtract anything from it because there's no parts of it that are going to get in there that I, I would worry about that radial gradient starting to intersect with. Okay. So again, hold down the option or alt key brings up the intersect button, or you can just go to the pop out menu and choose intersect. Both do the same thing. I'll intersect it with the radial gradient. And this time I'm going to drag it up in the sky more. What I really want for this photo is I just want to kind of, in a way, kiss the top of the mountains. Okay, I just wanna enhance the light, maybe rotate this around a little bit. Just kind of feather that over the top. Remember our radial gradient is a feather tool, okay? So the bulk of it's gonna go here. I don't want that. I just wanna skim the top of the mountains. If I put it down here, what's gonna happen when I start to increase exposure? That's gonna get hot really quick, okay? I don't really want that for this one. So I'll increase that exposure, but by, but by bringing that radial gradient up, I'm more just skimming along the tops of the mountains. I will make this brighter just so you can see sometimes when you use some of these selection tools, you get a little outline along the sky if you make it brighter or darker. I'm not gonna say you can always get rid of that. It's usually a sign that you've made something too bright or too dark. However, you can go try subtract, select sky, and if you watch, I'll zoom in here. If you watch that little outline halo, it does a pretty good job of getting rid of it there. Okay, so again, it's, you're not always gonna be able to get rid of it that way because it is the sign that you've done, you've gone overboard on a setting in there. So now I've just skimmed some light along the tops. Again, maybe down here to effects with a little bit of texture, maybe to color, make it even a little bit warmer up there. Okay, so pretty simple and then we can go back to that tool. If I, you wanted to see the before and after, that's before, that's after. But now we can go here, if we want to really draw attention to it, we can go the extra step, duplicate and invert the mask, then go back over here to tone, and then just bring your exposure down a little bit. Maybe bring the blacks down a little bit, okay? This one I don't think we need too much, otherwise it gets a little bit, to me, it, it gets a little bit too dark. But I could bring it down a little bit and then go globally and maybe just raise the exposure just a hair and kind of do a little bit of a push and pull between the two. But again, if you go take a look at this, we'll just click the before and then the after. You can see we're, we're just essentially taking whatever light that we really like about the photo. And remember, 
not every photo has really, really good light in it, okay? Uh, or, or a light source that we can amplify. You know, if I look at this photo uh, as an example here, this one's fairly flat. I don't know that I'm gonna go try to amplify a light source in a photo like this. I don't know that I'm gonna go try to amplify a light source in a photo like this. So keep in mind that not every single tutorial, not every single technique that you see is meant to work on every single photo. Hopefully I did an okay job here of just kind of letting you know what types of images that I look for when I use this technique. Also, while you're here, I did a video a while back that was really popular, five things that every Lightroom user should know. So if you haven't seen that one yet, that's a great place to go to next.